Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to share with y'all the process that I'm going through to make a like mermaid hummingbird fountain. Um, and this is in very much inspired by another video that I saw that I can't remember the name of the lady because I'm, I'm just rough about remembering names but I will have it linked, the original video is linked down in the video description. Um, she has a lot of really great uh, tutorials on making bird baths to attract hummingbirds and um, I, I saw like w actually one of our viewers hey you know who you are uh, had sent me an email with a link to like Vaughn check this out and I was like okay and I checked it out and it's amazing <laughs> and I was like I I need these in my life so today I am making my own hummingbird bird bath and it's going to be mermaid themed because mermaids are awesome um, and also, I have this mermaid bowl that we got for in like the clearance section somewhere. I don't know, but it's just like like a cheap plastic bowl, but I think it'll be just fine. And I'm going to be mounting it. I'm experimenting with mounting it onto this foam board because I know that the paper is not going to hold up well under. I don't know. It might. We'll see. But because it, it's on my front porch, I don't know. This is all experimental, but I have this solar pump. All the tools and materials are linked down in the video description below as best as I can, but it's solar powered. It's got this super long cord um, and it's just this wee bitty little pump. I wouldn't, I, I don't want to use a pump like this in any of my fish ponds, just be, like at least not without putting a filter box around it. But I think for the purposes of what we're doing here, just having it sending up through the tubing that came with it actually um, into our... Like we're gonna drill a hole through this big old sphere. Um, I hope it's not too big. I'm, again, experimental. Um, I don't think we're putting a thing on the tip of it. I don't know. We'll see. Cause it does have a little extender. We might. We'll see. Cause we could get some laminar flow action. We can always experiment and see how we like these little tips. Or I might end up using them in a different project for something else. But. And I'm going to be filling this in with moss and silk floral. Nothing that looks like it would have nectar in it because I don't want to confuse the hummingbirds at all. But just something to blend it into its environment. So we're fixing to use a whole lot of hot glue, guys. Um, so the way that this video is going to be structured is I am going to be... Um, doing a lot of time lapse like we'll talk about what we're doing and then we'll throw it into time lapse and I will actually have as the background for the time lapse audio from our backyard so if you like urban backyard like nature noises that might might be your cup of tea if not you clicked on my face and I'm sorry um, so let's go ahead and get started first things first I am painting the ball and I'm using non-toxic acrylic paint um, and I'm going to be letting it dry fully which is why we're getting it painted first Okay, first things first, let's see if we can drill a hole. I'm trying to figure out if I can drill a hole. How would you drill a hole in this, honey? Would you just use a big old drill bit? Yeah, probably. A paddle bit or a screw bit? Drilling and driving. Probably drilling, not a paddle. Okay. I hope this makes, I hope this works. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. Oh. Well, heck, where'd the hole go? There it is. <clears throat> no, that didn't work. <clears throat> I 
I need a thicker knitting needle. <laughs> Success! Okay, so what I've done here is I was having a hard time seeing as how there's a curve on the uh, tubing. It kept pushing in the styrofoam at an angle. So by just aligning with a knitting needle through down the center of the tube, we now, I was able to get it through. So, I mean, because my drill bit only got us so far and I'm pretty sure I drilled in at this angle and then drilled in at like a completely different angle from the other side. So. Uh, it's not perfect, but it works, and I think that's going to be just fine. I've gotten paint on literally everything. Alrighty guys, so what we've got going on here is I have just glued, I started with the base layer which is these um, seashells that were actually given to us by our friend Jim, so shout out to Jim, I don't even know if he still watches my work, but uh, we think of him every day, and he was very generous and gifted us these, um, and so this is kind of a little tribute to Jim as well. And so we have a lost count of how many are on here, but I just hot glued them down to the foam board and I've still got hot glue strings going every which way, but I'm going to be using a heat gun uh, on them uh, to kind of just whoop, shrink them up without hopefully affecting any of the silk floral. Um, and then we've got the moss on here kind of glued on. This is going to be on the railing of our covered porch so this is a little bit of an experiment to see how this moss holds up over time 
Um, but yeah, I just went through and all of the succulents, like the faux succulents and stuff that I've been hoarding, uh, I decided to go ahead and just use it. It's doing me no good just sitting in the drawer. And I'm going to come in and I like to glob a bit of hot glue on the shell and then onto the bowl and make a little bit of a bridge across. And then I'm just using these tweezers to kind of lift the petals of the succulents and cram the moss in there. And that way it gives it a much fuller effect. But I, yeah, I did the shells, a little bit of purple on the front edge and then layered in the succulents and then capped it in with, this is reindeer moss and this is sphagnum moss. I don't know, I don't, it's, Okay. It says preserved forest moss. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. It, I don't think it's sphagnum moss, actually. And I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly. But um, links to everything that I'm using, like I had said before, are down in the video description. And so now I'm going to be using... This is... Honestly, this is a little bit of like a friendship fountain. Um, because it's being made with so much stuff that... I've been hoarding that was gifted to us by our viewers. So we've got the shells from Jim. I've got the succulents that I think a pack of them were actually uh, purchased off of our wish list and sent to us. That's so where like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Like it was like just a whole like pack. So thank you guys so so much. I did buy the uh, one of the strings of the string of pearl. Uh, I think that's what these succulents are, if it were a real succulent. But yeah, I kind of liked it hanging. And then you're going to fill in, oops, the bottom of the bowl. So this is what the bottom of the bowl looks like. Um, but I'm going to be... These are some beautiful agates that I have just been hoarding like jaspers and agates, like polished river stone. And so I was thinking, oh, what is this from? This is actually, this is back, sent to us back in 2020. And these were sent to us by our friend, Leslie. So Leslie, if you, um, if you still watch our work, uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna really enjoy getting to use I think just the smaller of these, but I'll just be filling in the bottom. Possibly, I don't want to mess up the uh, the finish on them. They're so beautiful. Hmm. I don't know. I'll do some research and see. It's so like check out that one, y'all. That is just gorgeous. Like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm not certain yet. I might just actually just use some glass, uh, like fish tank glass in the bottom of this. It primarily to add weight and to hide the bottom. Um, yeah, I don't think the hummingbirds will mind, but we'll see. There's some dog fur permanently glued to the bottom of this. So that's perfect. So yeah, I found some fish tank glass just here in a drawer and I think they'll make a real pretty little bottom. And these are in some beautiful, of course, mermaidy colors of like an iridescent teal and green. I'm definitely gonna need more than that, but I'm sure I've got more stowed away somewhere. So meanwhile, over here, I have this little clip-on fan um, just sitting on the table blowing directly onto our ball here and it's working out pretty well um the part that was sitting in the cup didn't get dry so that's where i have my attention focusing at the moment um and actually i'm gonna go ahead just two birds with one stone or try to um i'm going to turn the fan on to low clip it off to the side here Whoop. and that way we still have a little bit of airflow and I'm going to begin dry brushing um, so the opposite of what we were doing earlier earlier we were really putting a lot of pigment down mm. 
Oh, iced coffee. Cheers, y'all. Um, but I'm just going to take... Oh, I wish I had a paint palette. I've got them. They're just in the other room. And wow, I'm so lazy. Uh, like I'm constantly impressing myself with how uh, lazy I am. So I'm just going to use this little card here. And I want to do some spots with this antique copper. Like this is antique copper and it's a metallic. So it'll have a little bit of shimmer to it maybe. And this one is chocolate brown. And again, it's um, a metallic as well. There we go. And so to do this, I'm just going to get a little bit on the tips of the bristles, blot it off. And then just start brushing it very lightly over the surface of our sphere. It's very, very important to actually do the blotting. And we can build up pigment on this way easier than what we can take it off. So, slow and steady. And I'm just sort of alternating the chocolate brown with the antique copper. And I'm just going to keep moving it around. And you could do this in, well, any color that you want, really. Honestly, we could have also, if you wanted it to look like a big pearl, um, we could have just painted it with a white acrylic or a kind of like um, a champagne pearl, like metallic, uh, and just kind of left it at that. But I really just wanted, ooh, that's really kind of sticking a bit. Um, I just like sitting it in the cup because it doesn't roll around on me. And I wanted the metallic just because I thought it might add a little bit of shimmer, but I'm not super worried about it being, you know, chrome style metallic. And I'm going to fill in in between those coppery patches with some of the chocolate brown metallic. Whew, dry brushing makes your arms tired. Makes mine tired at least. But I mostly just want to catch the high points on and you can see here if you don't let your undercoat dry fully it's just going to darken down uh, everything that you're dry brushing. 
so yeah definitely want to let this dry completely so that you are not sending uh you know paint into your water mix i say water mix it's just going to be water but And now I'm going to leave this to, um, it really didn't add too much to it, did it? You know, but I think it'll be fine. We may be able to go through with some like silver and add like some silver toned paint. Or we could do multiple coats. But I think I'm just gonna leave that as it is. And we will see how this looks when it's all nice and dry. So the next step, I've inserted the pump into the tube. It goes on pretty easy. I just want to get that on there. And then we're going to press that up and in the rest of the way. I almost don't even feel like we really need to hot glue it to the pump. Like this is pretty well on there. And I don't imagine, I don't feel like there's enough pressure or enough um, I feel like there's probably enough resistance to keep the styrofoam ball from floating off, but just in case, let's go ahead and do a little spot of hot glue. So I'm going to get my glue gun reheating, and we can, that also allows us to kind of glue it to where the tube's coming up a little bit more through the dead center. Um, so that'll be good. So to do this, I'm just gonna lift it up on the tube a bit. Let's get a different camera angle angle for y'all. Okay, so here we have our hot glue. Oop. And I'm just gonna go like glob, 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 glob. And let's get that down there. Holding it into position. And I'm just pressing firmly. Hot glue takes to styrofoam really well. So that is how that look, is looking now. And I think I'm going to trim this down uh, just flush. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and snip. There we go. I think this looks great, y'all. I am very happy with this. I'm going to switch off. No, I'm going to leave the hot glue gun going because I think my mom might actually have to hot glue the... Uh, pump because it's kind of lopsided and keeps falling over so there's that and let's look at the little pump attachments yeah see it just keeps falling over sometimes there's no helping it okay so here we have ooh, what's this so i guess this goes onto the tube or into the tube, and then we've got these different attachments. I imagine this would like, this one here would make just a really uh, pressurized, psh, like shooting a bunch of liquid. And then, oh, we've got this one. That's a nice little like bell. No, this isn't a bell. This is where these different heads attach. Now, I think because we have a small bowl um, relative to the size of the sphere. I think if we were to do any of the different shower heads on it, um, the bowl would drain pretty rapidly throughout the day. So I'm going to experiment with either leaving it just like this, like it may just stay like this with nothing protruding up. We may try, oh, the tube goes in it, maybe, mm -hmm. here, how do I? <laughs> well, it might just be the tube then, because this end goes very comfortably into the tube, but it doesn't seem like the tube's going to fit in here, and I don't think we'll be able to, we might, we might be able to fit this end into the tube. I don't think it's designed for that to happen though. lost the bit of tube that I had snipped off so I'm just gonna try this one here 
off the nope they're about the same yeah okay so it doesn't look like we'll be able to use that then that's fine we'll have it for a different project um, actually I have a whole drawer for spare pump pieces so we'll see how that goes and so yeah so now we will just let this dry the rest of the way probably for at least another hour I really want it dry dry like no 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 risk of anything um yeah let's go ahead and glue it into the bowl too I'm very excited for that part <laughs> it just keeps falling over okay so also it's pretty heavy on its own I don't know if I'm going to need to use these mostly because I really want to make sure that it's easy to clean and if I have a whole bunch of loose stuff here in the bottom I feel like that's going to be um, a bit of a headache to try to clean. So I'm also going to, I don't know, if we have to hot glue it to get it to stick, that that's just how it is, I suppose. But yeah, that's what I was afraid of. This back suction cup doesn't hold as well as what I need it to. So, I've run over my cord. There we are. So I'm gonna do just an unreasonable, maybe, we shall see. I'm gonna do a lot of hot glue there on this end. And then I'm gonna do a lot there in the middle. And now I'm going to flip this over and place it. And I want to make sure that this is, and the reason why I did so much hot glue is because it makes it retain uh, the heat for just a little longer, um, gives me a little bit more time to make sure that everything is actually centered. And then I can just hold it in place um, until we're done. Ooh, okay. I'm so excited, you guys. Now, yeah, there's not a whole lot we can do about the cord um, unless I wanted to, like, cut down and then fill in uh, with something else, uh, which might not be the worst idea, but I'm just going to hide it in some potted plants, I guess, like in amongst some potted plants. So, yeah, I'm going to set an hour timer and walk away from this once the hot glue is set that way I stop fiddling with it and just let it dry completely okay so please pardon the shaky camera I can't find my tall tripod but I am just here filling this up in the sink with the little attachment head and I'm gonna try to fill it to like within an inch of the top just to see. Yeah, and the bubbles are just from aeration. They see there's no like soap or anything in it. taking the solar panel and the sun isn't quite up yet all the way so we'll see how this uh, starts to we'll see if this starts to burble and do its thing uh, as the sun rises it's a bit of a hazy morning and the sun is still uh, below the tree line so I'll keep y'all posted. <laughs> okay guys, I wanted to show you, it is so close to the solar panel actually being in the sun, but it is still not really going. Um, like there's a little bit of something happening right there. You can see it's just not quite getting it all the way. So I'm gonna scooch the solar panel just a bit. 
Ooh. Now it's not quite full on yet, as you can see. <laughs> but, uh, oh, it's so close. So I'm, I'm gonna hold the panel in full sunlight. Uh, and just to, cause I cannot wait another moment <laughs> to see how this works. So, ooh, full sun, there we are. Oh, it's just burbling. Now it's not really making any noise, so I guess that's fine. And I, my hole's a little off center. Whoop, and there goes that. <laughs> well, the hot glue didn't work, did it? <laughs> Let's revisit this. Okay, so what has happened is the force of the ball wanting to float is greater than the friction of the tube holding it down. So I still have the tube in there, it is just, I'm letting the ball float on it. Like, if you can see, it just, I'm not gonna resist physics. I, I rarely win when it's me versus physics. So let's put this back into the light and see what happens. Oh, I love that, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now I just hope that if it gets super windy, I hope that the uh, sphere doesn't get blown away, but I don't honestly know what we could do otherwise. And I think this will probably, yeah, that's not in full sun, full sun. So I'm gonna have to figure out where to put this that it catches full sun all day. So that our little birds can be happy. So until then, I'll just sit that off over here and you can see it's still not, still not quite catching enough. But I bet during the hottest part of the day, whenever this is in full sun, uh, right when the hummingbirds could really use a nice cool bath, hopefully this will do the trick for them. So there is a thirsty bird drinking from the hummingbird feeder. Oh, there's another one. I wonder if they'll be back. So I've set up this fountain that you can see from here um, and I am waiting in rapt anticipation for a hummingbird to notice that I made this fountain I'm like I'm dying guys <laughs> the anticipation is getting me um like and see I've moved some of my house plants outside too so now I get to peek through the bushes <laughs> and spy on some birds but uh as soon as I catch one playing in the fountain, I'll let you guys know. Oof, day one of having a fountain for the hummingbirds. I hope they, I hope they like it. Okay, so I am back at it. Um, I've been having some trouble with getting enough water pressure coming up out of the uh, top of the sphere. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shave off just this bottom like third and to do that I'm just using this serrated blade. I'm not going to bother painting the bottom, I don't feel like that's necessary. get a nice like burbling going on to attract the birds to let them know that it's there. Excellent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hand vac this off, get all those styrofoam bits, and then we will put this outside and I will wait to trim the tube until we fitted it onto the fountain. Okay, so the sphere still sits nice and pretty, but I need to trim about a quarter inch shorter than what the tube like exceeds. So let's do that. Alrighty guys, I wanted to give y'all one final thought on this fairy fountain. You can see I have it here placed 
on this bistro table and you can see right let's see if i can get my finger in okay right there the one on a stake is the solar panel to some of the lights that we have on the fence line and then the solar panel to the actual fountain is actually tucked into the fence right there and you can see it is just burbling along wonderfully uh, I had to move it to a different location where it does get because like it's only it's only like 6 p.m. right now and it had stopped like it where it was located on the front porch was in full enough shade that the solar panel was no longer working and I was like well that's no good this is the hot part of the day like the hottest part of the day uh, in our backyard in <laughs> front yard um, this is when you know the animals are going to be needing the birds are going to be needing water you know the most so and if you hear water that's actually the fountain that's right behind us but I just wanted to get some footage to see if any of the birds at all will come in and take a close like take a closer look at this because while I think it's beautiful and I love the concept of the fountain I really would have much rather have gone with a different solar pump, something that's a higher wattage. Now granted it probably would have cost a little over twice as much, but it could, like let me flip this around actually. So the pump that this pond is running off of, the solar panel works even like almost until maybe 20 or 30 minutes before full sunset. Uh, it's just a bigger solar panel and I will have it linked down in the video description as well um, Just because if you have it in your budget to get a more powerful solar pump um, That's what I would do and that's likely what I might do to upgrade this fountain But you know if you've got 15 bucks and some stuff laying about and you want to make a little fairy fountain uh, But this pump doesn't seem bad and I will keep you all posted on its quality as uh, time passes because I mean 15 bucks isn't a whole lot but if the pump only lasts for like a month then it's a waste of $15 probably whereas this pump this will be its second yeah at least its second year uh, being used I mean if the sun shine and it's going alrighty y'all this is how our sphere has come out um, be sure to stay tuned to the Vonster vlog, uh, because if we're able, if the hummingbirds come and use it, that's where we will be posting the footage. Um, and I really look forward to sharing more projects like this with you guys. So if y'all have any questions or requests for future tutorials or projects like this, please let me know down in the comments. If you're here hanging out for the premiere, hey everybody, thanks so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, yeah, I, just, I had so much fun making this, <laughs> and I've got uh, a lot more other projects kind of in the back of my mind that I'm really eager to uh, make into reality, like this one here. So thanks again so much for being here, you guys, and I will see y'all next time. So uh, all the different ways to help support the channel are down in the video description. Um, so you can find us on Patreon, or you can join our Happy Crafter Club, uh, sign up for a free newsletter, and all sorts of stuff. So. Happy crafting, y'all. Bye. <laughs>